Hello there, folks. Hey, listen, today I'm going to talk about the shaky head. By the way, if you like my videos, please subscribe. And if you really like it, give it a thumbs up. That'd be great. I'm going to try to have more content out there for you guys. But today we're going to talk about the all-important shaky head. I want to make sure he had it. Mwah. Mwah. Short and fat. You know, if you're going to take your child fishing or your wife or let's say somebody that didn't have a lot of experience, the shaky head is just a catch them all fish. Down here, when we fish the Cooper River, especially around the Quimby Creek area, lots of grass, but there's also some wood and some rock. And so, first of all, I like that head, which is a football, football style head. It just comes through better, except for the grass. Now you can have a bullet shaped head and it'll come through grass easier. And I've also experimented with some Texas rigged worms. I don't get bit as much on them as I do the shaky head. Don't ask me why. Oh, he had it. Oh, he had it. He was swimming with it just for a minute. There he's got it. There we go. <laughs> he's a little one. He's a little one. Oh! Caught one on the old bungee worm. There we go. Stop it. Stop it. These little ones you got. Oh, watch out for them because they will hurt you. Oh, just stop. But anyway, back to taking somebody fishing that doesn't have a whole lot of experience. Let's talk about the rod first. With the rod, you want a rod that's got some backbone. A lot of times when you buy a rod from Walmart or wherever you're going to buy it, and they're fairly cheap, and you know, of course, you don't want to get your five-year-old a real expensive rod. What happens is it's real whippy, and so when you set the hook on a fish, the way you pin them is you want that barb going into and through the mouth. If it's just the point, you're not gonna hook them so good. And they'll come off. Cause a bass will clamp onto this and you gotta pull enough so that the hook point penetrates through everything to actually hook them. That's real important to understand. As the baits, I mean, these, this is real simplistic. I use mainly trick worms, sometimes finesse worms. I've mentioned this before, I got enough in my boat to last me a year. So what I want to do is do some old school baits just to see how they work and just go through a bunch of them. But you basically rig it up Texas style and I'll do this here in just a little bit. Actually, I'll do it now. Especially down here on the Cooper River, I like to use black or a June bug. If the sun's out, the water's fairly clear, or not fairly clear, but a little stained, June bug. Uh, and green pumpkin, you know, if the water's real clear. But around the Quimby Creek area, it's rarely real clear. Times I've gone anyway. Now, with the zoom trick worm, see that nose? It comes down like a bullet, and it's, it's, it's made that way for a reason. So when you Texas rig it, this thing, when you jerk it through the water, it's going to be real snaky. But on a shaky head, what I do is I like to bite first little half inch off, probably. <sighs> half inch. So it's a blunt end. So what I'll do is I'll bring it down. Come on through. See where the hook point goes in. Move it up a little bit. And I'll come through a little bit, come back so it hangs straight. And when this thing, if you need to skip it, it'll skip and that front end won't get torn up so much. So anyway, that's my shaky head setup. Now, 
preferably, you know, David Dudley makes these uh, perfection lures with the, the three legs or the two legs that stand up. And if we didn't have a bunch of grass, that would be my favorite shaky head. But anyway, that's my setup. And for beginners, down here on Quimby Creek, especially that area, you're not going to catch, I guess they got some nice size bass. I mean, I've caught three pounders in there, three and a half, but nothing big, big. I assume those fish are out more toward the Cooper River, but it's a great numbers game. I use eight pound test. I think that's fine. I'd probably get away with 10. Um, I just tied this leader, so it's a long leader. But I've tied this to a FG knot. Can you see that knot? That's an FG knot. You can look that up on YouTube. It is a pain in the butt to tie. But the FG knot is really a good knot. The double Albright is, I believe, the second best. Uh, I went out one time on Smith Mountain Lake and I skipped docks for eight hours straight with a double Albright and it broke twice. Next day I went out with uh, the FG knot. It didn't fail one time. Now it does fail on me, but I find out that's because I tied it wrong. So make sure you tie it right. But either one is fine. But the trick to getting more fish in the boat is having that braid that has no stretch to some kind of a leader, preferably fluorocarbon, over monofilament. Because monofilament has a lot of stretch. And when they set the hook or they pull back or the fish pulls away, you don't have as much stretch. And that hook point will get driven through the fish's mouth. All right, big key. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. So I'm gonna lay down and thunk. There we go. Wish I had my chesty on. It's not huge, but I haven't retied this in a long time, and I don't know how bad the line is. Mm, yeah, hey, that's a good one. Yeah, it is a good one for, for me on the Cooper River. I know the guys down here catch huge ones. But this one, that's good for me. What do you think, huh? Yeah. Mwah. Nice, healthy fish. You know, even down here on the Cooper River, if there's docks, there's fish. And I'm very comfortable fishing docks because that's what I did. Smith Mountain Lake a lot. Now, I haven't had a whole lot of success on a jig, even a chatterbait. And I'm sure there are people here that do, but I haven't. But I've had a lot of luck with the shaky hit, fishing docks. Where it should be though, man. These docks are getting better and better. Mm. There we go. One thing you want to do with the docks is you need to parallel the piers. I've noticed that you know every now and then I'll catch fish coming across them out to the river, but if I'm flowing with the current coming past the piers, I have much more luck. Oh, that's, I don't know if that's a bass. He's got me wrapped. 
Catching fish in front of another boat, isn't it? Yes, it is. Did the hook come out? The hook came out. Look at that. Right underneath the dock in the middle of the current. Boom. Kissy, kissy. All right. Good fish. But the docks, especially, uh, give bass an overhead cover, which I think they look for and much more luck on the low tide, uh, the very end of the low tide or first hour or two of the incoming tide, which seems is normal, I guess. And I just like fishing docks. And I like catching fish in front of people, no matter if they are small. How y'all doing? Good, how about you? All right. I'm here long enough to help you drag a big one in if you need me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen today. They're all little today. Uh -huh. That's what they say. Check out this osprey coming down. Yeah, boom! If you guys can't see it, I know that was too far away, but he did get a nice fish. Success!